What's up everybody? Uh, this is Sam coming to you with another YouTube video. Um, this time I want to talk about ammo, not necessarily management, but realistic loadouts, um, as well as your role within the grand scheme of things, and, and if that dictates how much ammo you need. Hopefully you can hear this pretty good, got my GoPro going again. Um, so let's dive into it. As a civilian, which is the, the avenue that I approach this, I want to kind of start with a, a daily carry type of thing. Uh, a lot of people today, myself included in the past and others, we really harp on the in the woods type thing. Uh, and there's a time and a place for that like I've talked about before. Um, but we also need to look at things for yourself in your daily life right now. We're not necessarily, uh, we're in a collapse, but we're not in a completely collapsed state where we're walking around with you know rifles and carriers and things like that. Uh, we're just not there yet. <clears throat> so, because of that, what do we have on us? Well, we don't want to draw a lot of attention to ourselves, so typically we have our carry guns, right? So, let me go ahead and clear that real fast. Okay. Uh, so, for me, it's a uh, currently a Glock 45, um, or a Glock G45, so 9mm. Uh, and that's, that's going to be my carry gun. Uh, that's what I have on me. That's my defensive primary at this particular avenue in time. So how much ammo is enough? Uh, around home, if I'm if I'm just hanging around in the house, it's probably just one. Uh, one one mag in the gun and I'm good. I don't really need a whole lot more than that. Um, outside of that, if I go to town, I typically plus up with a spare. So uh, for me, it's a spare 17 round mag. Um, it gives me 17 in the gun, 17 is a spare. Uh, and that's that's enough what a lot of people jump to from there is I need to if I need more ammo I need carriers right I need to have you know two two more mags because we don't do just a single we do two um, as a plus up so we'll have two mags and a carrier on the belt and stuff like that and what they seem to negate is the fact that they have pockets on their pants provided they have you know normal human pants and they're not walking around in sweatpants and in pajamas and crap in the middle of the day uh, so because of that, you can carry a lot of freaking handgun mags in your pocket. It's really simple. You can slip, uh, you can carry three in your front, three in your back. You know, that would be a total of uh, 12 mags total if you did three in each pocket. Uh, that's a lot of freaking handgun ammo to be toting around with you. But if that's something you needed to do because that's all you had or your, your current avenue of approach was a handgun, that's an option. Um, I'm working with a company called Shapeshifter Concealment. Uh, we're, we're in talks, kind of. Uh, it's kind of been a weird time because of Black Friday and holidays and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm hoping to get it going anyways with a, uh, <clears throat> a product that will make you know pocket carry a little bit easier for a, a handgun mag uh, and a lot. Just make organization and stuff like that a little bit better. Um, but realistically, one in the gun and a spare is typically enough. However, handguns are not as effective as rifles at stopping threats. So if you're going out into a higher threat area, it's probably smart to carry more ammo. Um, that being said, you don't really need to carry 20 uh, handgun mags on you. Uh, I think I think a good number is one in the gun, a spare uh, on the belt line uh, or in your pocket. Um, and then if you have to carry another, it would be in the pocket of the belt line at that point. So I, I think two spare mags is, is realistically enough uh, for most situations that you as a civilian could get into in this current state and time. Now, let's say that... Um, things are a little weird and you have to grab your rifle. So um, the situation is dictated <clears throat> that for whatever reason, we're still not walking around in full carrier gear. Uh, we, have the hand, we have the handgun on us because that's always kind of our primary. Uh, and we have a rifle that we need at the ready. So you go to grab your rifle, you sling it up, you have a mag in your gun, uh, which you know I apparently don't right now. Uh, you have a mag in your gun and you need a plus up. This is again where I don't think you have to have a credit card solution to this. Uh, mag carriers are always great, but then you have to grab the mag carrier, put it on your belt and everything else, when you know a simple pocket is going to carry everything you need as it is. So you can carry uh, one per in your back pocket, you can carry two per in your back pocket, you don't have a wallet, uh, and one in each front pocket. So you could have upwards of five to six spare mags without ever having to get into a carrier. Um, what is a situation like this? Uh, well. Let's say that, you know, things are a little odd. Um, tensions have gotten higher. People are a lot more aggressive. You've got a rifle in your truck um, and you're rolling through town to go pick up the kids or something like that. And um, you, you need a spare mag. So you keep one in your back pocket type of thing. Uh, for that, I mean, you're 
you're talking every every rifle mag is double what a handgun mag is generally so you're, you've got 30 rounds for a spare you don't have to in my opinion carry as much as far as the spare mags go uh one spare mag is, is generally enough uh for everything you're going to need uh rifle wise civilian wise in my opinion uh let's talk about law enforcement for a minute uh i've been i've been kind of talking with some others uh <clears throat> In, in the last few weeks about you know loadouts and setups and things like that reason being uh my local my, my town is looking at getting a police department put together for the town finally uh, as opposed to relying on sheriffs that are you know uh, 20 to 30 minutes plus out uh and i'm looking at potentially doing an auxiliary unit uh for that because i have a full-time job but i also want to help uh so i've been kind of picking their brain about that and again that Law enforcement is very similar to the civilian world in that the handgun is the primary. So you would have one to two spare mags uh, on your belt line or three uh, for your handgun and maybe one for your rifle. Well, what about a carrier? Again, the situation dictates, but typically one in a carrier for an external vest is enough. Um, one to two, really. Um, especially if you're in a SWAT top role and you're moving from like a Bearcat to a building and back from the building to the Bearcat. Um, you know, again, two two to three spare mags total, or two to three mags total, is, is probably realistically enough. Now, let's say, um, you're in a situation where you need a grab and go kit. So you're a civilian, you're you're at home, you're in a situation where, uh, like I am, at least currently, where we don't have local law enforcement. Um, we have to rely on the town twenty to thirty minutes away. That's if anyone's available. Um, and something goes down at the school. I live five to ten minutes away from my school. Something goes down, I get a text message or a call from, you know, my kid or, or a family member or, or someone that's at the school because I know them. Hey, you know, there's a shooting going on. Uh, if that's the case, I'm looking at something like this. This is a, uh, a Minuteman bag from uh, Sojourn Gear. I've had this for quite a while. I use it for a, a variety of things, but it kind of stays in a grab-and-go status for me. Um, I could pair this with a slick carrier. I don't have to have a carrier at all if I didn't, you know, have the time or place for armor. Um, and inside that, I've got three spare mags, a bottle of water, uh, and an IFAC, along with some uh, protein bars stuffed down in there. That's really all I need with the tourniquet on the outside. Um, and for me, that's a pretty decent grab and go. So it could literally be as simple as hey, things are getting weird. I can throw this in the truck when I get there, throw it over my body. I don't even have to cinch it down grab my rifle and if i have to go in to extricate my family members because you know at that point they're they're mine that that's my priority they're my vip at that particular moment um i can do so with the rifle if i feel the need is necessary or i can just you know respond with a handgun but no one gets into a fight with a handgun unless they just have to uh so i could have you know at that point four mags if I, unless i have one in my pocket as well along with a full ifac tourniquet uh bottle of water if for whatever reason i needed it and some power bars. Um, the water is in there as this is kind of like a modern equivalent to a possibles bag. Uh, if you think of it from like a frontiersman or a Minuteman uh, black powder era thought process, it's kind of a possibles bag. Uh, it's got a little bit of everything you need to, uh, to do work, but it's not all inclusive. Um, this is something that I use a lot. I use it with a backpack a lot if I'm just kind of patrolling the property or if I'm just going out in the woods for a little bit or going hunting or something like that and I don't feel like carrying a full load or anything. Uh, this this covers everything I need in a pretty realistic mind, uh, mindset and standpoint. Okay, so moving on from that, <clears throat> sorry if that was a little loud. Uh, now you get into the inner woods type thing. This is where I see a lot of variety and not a lot of standardization, and that's okay. Uh, but as long as you're coming to this from a realistic thought process, um, a lot of times what people will do is they'll say, "Hey, I need all the ammo." because I'm, I'm a displaced dismounted infantry unit um, in a situation where I'm fighting a government force and I need all the ammo because I don't have a resupply. And I don't necessarily disagree with that <clears throat> if that's a realistic context or situation you're preparing for. However, not everyone has to have that in my opinion. Um, if you look at a, a group layout, you have got to have leadership within that group. That leadership therein has to be able to focus on what's going on and take care of business to tell people what they need to do and keep everything going smoothly or as smoothly as possible. If you are spending all of your time fighting, you are not accomplishing that goal. So for me, um, I have had like the jungle rig that I showed uh, here on uh, previously on the channel. 
That had, depending on how I had it set up, it had anywhere from 9 to 15 mags on the belt, plus one of the gun. That's a lot of freaking ammo, it's a lot of weight. Um, it's doable because of how that setup is, um, but it's a lot of ammo. And that is something that you would look into if you are strictly going to be someone who is uh, at that infantry base level. And I'm not trying to be derogatory in any way, shape, fashion, or form with that. Uh, you have to have fighters. But if that's that's kind of the extent of the involvement you want to go into, you're not really looking at leading anybody, you're not looking at taking charge, you're not looking at calling shots, um, then yeah, by all means, be an effective individual that can lay down the hate because you're needed. Um, if you are looking at moving past that or you're needing more flexibility, the belt kit with 15 mags is a bit much. So for me, what I'm using currently is the Plat Attack Peacekeeper. Uh, this is the Mark V. And uh, the way I have it set up because of the role that I envision myself, because everyone gets to envision their own role, um, is more of a leadership role. It's a task management role. I've got six plus one in the gun. Uh, so I've got a basic combat loadout at that particular point. And because of how it's set up, um, I could generally flex between, hey, I have to be a fighter or, hey, I have to be a leader. Um, <clears throat> obviously, more is better. I have the ability to uh, to plus up if I need to, depending on what I'm doing with the pouches. As it is right now, I've got six mags. Um, I've got two in a speed reload that's uncovered. I've got two retained reloads. So in this role, um, if I was needing to be, like I said, a fighter, I can focus on just having ammo and backfilling from my pack as I go. Um, but I'm not going to be able to sustain a fight as much as someone with like 15 mags. It's just, you know, logistically that's not the case. I am going to have to, in turn, because of this, carry more ammo in my pack, which is not necessarily a bad thing in my opinion, but that's something that I have to do and I have to own that. So as a leader, because I'm looking at being more of a leader, I'm looking at organizing, I'm looking at directing uh, people around me, I don't have to focus on the fighting as much because my, my effectiveness does not come from the muzzle of my gun, it comes from my words, my mind, and my actions. Uh, so because of that, I'm okay with dropping down into six plus one. Um, or if someone else needs to lead the group, I have no problem plussing up and, and being a trigger puller at that particular moment. Uh, the nice thing about having flexibility in your kit is, let's say it's a situation where we're doing more vehicle mounted stuff, I've got more ammo in the truck, I don't have to carry all 15 mags or anything like that, so six is, six is generally enough. Um, or let's say I need to bring a handgun into the world. Uh, we're, we're in an area that's urban, we're doing a lot of uh, not necessarily searching, but a lot of uh, looking through, you know, tight areas, homes, scaling ladders, going on roofs, stuff like that. I could then take two mags and supplement those two mags with my handgun because I can then use that handgun one-handed for scaling ladders, searching through uh, alcoves, searching under buildings, uh, things like that, because it's just a lot more effective in tight quarters than a 13-9 with a suppressor. So because of how this is set up, I now have the ability to have a holster there, uh, old school cool style, where I would just have to uh, displace the flap from retention and draw the handgun. Uh, when it's on body, it's actually it's pretty smooth because of the, the roundness of the body. It brings everything kind of away from it. Uh, and it's actually pretty quick to draw. So I could do that. I could shove a couple of handgun mags somewhere if I needed to. Uh, realistically, I'm probably not gonna carry any more handgun ammo than what's in the gun for this. Uh, just because I don't feel like it's necessary for that role. Uh, it, it, it's a, it's a task-oriented object. I'm using it for searching and things like that. It's not a primary fighting situation, unlike the uh, civilian aspect where it's my carry gun and that may be all I have, or the law enforcement aspect and that may be all I have access to where I need more handgun ammo. So yeah, um, the big point to this, and it, it, it was kind of a ranting post, uh, is make sure that you're being cognizant of your role um, everyone wants to be the hero. Nobody really wants to take charge and lead in the hero aspect. If you don't have people uh, leading, then you're not going anywhere. If you have 20 dudes and nobody's stepping up and calling shots or, or helping call shots, then you got 20 dudes milling around with, with nothing going on. And you're not effective at that point. If you're planning on being a community leader, you have to understand that if you're leading, you need to understand that you're going to lead. You're not going to be fighting uh, until that time comes and you have to fight. So if that's the case, you may not need to walk around like a walking armory. Uh, you need more task-oriented objects. You need things like smokes, you need comms, 
you need you know tools and nav and things like that so not everything has to be ammo related so it's just food for thought guys it was like i said it's kind of a spur of the moment rant uh rant post uh of a thing it's going to be on my youtube uh but just make sure that you're being realistic uh not only in this in the timeline that you're in but the role that you're intending to fill uh and as long as you're doing that i don't think you can go wrong anyways guys take it easy i hope you enjoyed it and stay safe